Hello, my friends. Miss Robin here, doing my part. Try to help parents out. Reading for the day. The Big Tidy Up by Nora Smaridge. Illustrated by Les Gray. This was my favorite book as a kid. This is my personal book from when I was a kid. And ta-da, you can see how I wrote my name there. Is that awesome? The Big Tidy Up. The Big Tidy Up, a golden press book. 1970. Jennifer knew as well as you that everything has its place, but she didn't care a whit, a bit. So her broom was a real disgrace. Her shoe was askew on the windowsill. Her scarf was under the bed. Her beautiful box to keep ribbons in was full of old junk instead. A very old worn out lollipop was stuck to her bathroom pocket. And her bureau drawer, it was plain to see, had been struck by a super rocket. Jennifer's mother looked in one day and her smiles all turned to gloom. She couldn't disguise her shocked surprise at the state of Jennifer's room. Your new blue sweater is not the thing to try on the cat, she said. Why is your doll on the closet floor and what's that lump in your bed? You must like to live in a mess, I guess, with your things all every which way. So I won't touch your room with my mop and broom from now until Christmas Day. But we don't want people to see this room with your things all lying about. So on Jennifer's door, she quickly hung a very big sign. Keep out. Yikes. Well, Jennifer had a lovely time for two or three days or more. She set her hat on the ivy plant and she hung her jeans on the floor. Her comb, two hankies, and one white glove fell under the bedside chair. She did her, so did her slip with the great big rip. And Jennifer left them there. Under her pillow, she kept some pie to eat when she woke at night and a nice raw carrot or two to chew to give her an appetite. She did her homework in ink, I think, as she lay flat down on the bed. She got finger paint on the pillowcase and never turned down the spread. Then, little by little, things went wrong, till Jenny was filled with gloom at the fusty, dusty, musty mess she had made of her nice pink room. And the cat seems annoyed. Oh, yikes. The bed was prickly, the floor was strewn, the chairs were heaped up too. There wasn't one bit of room to sit unless she sat on a shoe. Up in the corner, he liked it there. A spider was calmly spinning. He had only a tiny web so far, but of course, he was just beginning. Let's see if I can come in close and you guys just see. Oh my God. All right, tell the truth. How many of you used your room looks like this? Yeah, I know. I got four kids, or I went through four kids. I've been there. Jen never could find two socks that matched. Not one of her shirts was clean. She looked at herself in the mirror once, and she wasn't fit to be seen. Where, oh, where had her hairbrush gone? There wasn't a single sign. Her hair stuck out all over her head. So she looked like a porcupine. 
Poor Jennifer. Oi. She got a lot of socks. None that match. Uh oh. Jen sat and thought with a worried frown. Perhaps I should run away. No one could live in a room like this from now until Christmas Day. But it wouldn't be fun to run and run and then have to sleep in a stall or a spooky wood. Though, of course, I could and not have a room at all. Hmm. So, Jennifer opened her window wide to let in some good fresh air. The spider gave her a nasty look and scuttled off who knows where. And then Jen picked up stuff, blew away fluff, shook out the mat, hung up her hat, swept the floor, tidied the drawer, made the bed, smoothed the spread, and worked and worked for most of the day until every last thing was put away. And at last, when her room was neat as a pin, she hung up a very big sign, Come In. And I bet you her mother gave her the biggest hug ever. All right. Be good. Eat healthy. Stay safe. Love you guys.